Hello everyone, in this tutorial we will see how to use the Firebase cloud messaging service in order to send push messages and receive them as notifications. Firebase cloud messaging is just a new version of the Google cloud messaging and now it is recommended to use this newer version. So first let's see how the whole process works on the paper. There are two major steps in this process. First step is involved with client registration and the second step is all about broadcasting a message from the VCM or Firebase Cloud Messaging to users. In the first step, which is the registration, user sends a request to the Firebase asking for registration. Then the server responds with a message. This message is a string, which is a unique token that has been generated for this particular user. Ok, so now we have this token and we need to save it somewhere. For that we can use a remote server that has an installed database. So our remote server accepts the token and then saves it into the database. And that's all about the registration. We do this for each user so that the server has all these auto-generated tokens saved into the database. Now the second step. Goal in this second step is to send a notification to users. Only the Firebase can send these notifications. In order to broadcast the message we must provide tokens, which are the actual users who will be receiving the message. Ok, so we send a request from our server to the Firebase. Our request contains a message that users we will receive and also a list of tokens which represent our users. Firebase accepts the requests and then broadcasts a message to all registered users or it broadcasts a message to all tokens that we provide to it. And then the message is received in a form of notification. And that's about it how it works. So let's start with the implementation. First go to the Firebase console and create a new project. Give it a name and wait until project is created. Then choose the option Add Firebase to your Android app. We must provide a package name, so to do that go to the Android Studio and look for your application's package name. Copy paste it and hit the, hit the Add App button. You will get a pop-up to save the file but just skip it for now, we will do it later, so just press continue. Here it says that we need to add some dependencies to our project. So copy the top one dependency and place it into the project version of the build.gradle settings. Okay. Then copy the second one. This one needs to go to the apps version of the build.gradle settings. Also add these two dependencies. You can find all these dependencies on the GitHub project sample that I will post. Now press finish. Click on the new created project options and choose manage. Here we need to download this configuration file for our project that has been auto-generated. So download it and place it into the root of the app folder of the project. After that just press the sync now to sync everything. Then go to the manifest file. Here we are going to define all the services that we need. First service that we need is a service for receiving the messages from the Firebase. In this example I will name it Firebase Messaging Service. As you see it has an action filter that is set for listening messages. 
then we need another service that will listen for token message. So when we receive the token during the registration, that token will be available in this service. So the class will be named Firebase Instance ID Service. And it also has an Firebase Intent Filter. So let's first create this messaging service class. Make it extend Firebase messaging service and then implement the onMessage received method. This method is called when the message is received from the VCM. And when we receive the message, we will notify the user in a form of notification. So let's call a method named like show notification and pass in the extracted message. To get the actual message, we use a parametered object remote message which contains a data. Get data method returns the map data type object that saves information in a key value format. So to get the value from our message, we just call the method with the key being message. Now we are going to define this key message uh, with its value when we send the notification from the server and we will do that in the second part. Okay, so now just create this method. Here we will create a notification with our message. Now uh, this code is pretty straightforward and I will just speed up video here. Everything you need you can find on the GitHub project, so just know that we are creating a simple notification and we are passing a message that uh, we receive from the Firebase. Okay. <clears throat> After this, let's create a second service which, will, which is named Firebase Instance ID Service. Remember, this is the service that receives the token from the Firebase when the device is registered. Method that will receive this token is called onTokenRefresh. Now, to get the actual token, call the Firebase Instance ID class with the method getInstance, then getToken. Then, as you remember, we save this token into the remote database. So create a method like register token and pass in the received token. Now we need to use this OK HTTP network library to send the token to the server. Create a new OK HTTP client. We will send the token using the POST method. So we will write the token into the body of the POST request. So then create a request body and add the parameter named token with the value of parametered token. Then create a new request using request builder class and pass in the URL to the PHP script that will be responsible for saving this token into the database. Of course we will create this script in a few minutes so I will name it like register.php. Then to execute the request call the uh, client with the method named the new call passing in passing in the request and the just call method execute now let's create a database where we will store our tokens i'm using a mysql database provided by the xamp server in a php my admin i will create a new database named vcm and the table named users in order to keep things as simply as possible, I will just create two columns. Uh, first one is the standard auto incremented ID. And then a second column is named token in which the registration tokens will be saved. Then set the ID to be of course a primary key and also set the token to be unique so that we can't have duplicates into the database of our registration tokens. Okay, so now we will create a script that we mentioned before that will uh, take this token from the post request and save it into the database. So create a new script and uh, here we first check if the method is post and if we provided a parameter 
named token. If so, we create the connection to the MySQL database using the MySQL connect function. Then we create a query for inserting this token into the database. What we will add here is an additional statement on the duplicate key for the token column so that there will be no duplicates into the database. Now just execute the query using the MySQL query function providing your, providing your connection and the SQL statement and then close the connection. OK, so the registration part of the implementation is now done. We can now test this. Uh, OK, so it looks that I forgot to pass the body into the actual request in our network request. So just append the request with the post method and pass in the request body from above. Now to initialize the whole process, just go to main activity and call the subscribe to topic method from the Firebase messaging class. You can type in any topic you like. I will just type test. And then to make a request for the token, call the get token method. All right, now let's test this. OK, let's check our database now. As you see, we get an auto-generated tokens from the Firebase for each device and we store them into the remote database. I will stop the video here and in the following one we will create server-sided script to send a request to the Firebase that will broadcast message to other devices. See you.